this lesson, we're going to talk about other methods to solve quadratic equations, specifically completing the square, the quadratic formula, and then we're going to also make sure we talk about other types of solutions that we get from a set of numbers called the imaginary numbers. So here's the standard that we're working on. And so this standard, it says that we need to make sure we have various methods for solving quadratic equations, square roots, completing the square, quadratic formula, factoring, and make sure that we understand that quadratic equations have complex solutions, which we'll go over. So by the end of this, you should have enough methods for solving a quadratic equation. So you can look at the equation and decide what method works best for you to solve that particular equation. So first, let's go ahead and talk about these numbers called the imaginary numbers. So suppose that you had this equation x squared plus 1 equals 0, and you were like, okay, well, I'm going to just, you know, use a square root method to solve that. Well, if you go ahead and you use a square root method, you get x squared, subtract 1 from both sides, then you take the square root, remembering you're plus or minus because you're an excellent Algebra 2 student, and you get plus or minus the square root of negative 1. Well, what is the square root of negative 1? So what number times itself would give you exactly negative 1? And you know if you use real numbers, one of those numbers would have to be negative and one of them would have to be positive, which means they're not the same number. Well, the thing is, there is a number that exists, and there are numbers that <clears throat> up until now you may not have discussed in other classes, but hopefully you did. But they're called imaginary numbers. Imaginary numbers are part of what we call the complex number systems. Imaginary numbers... So we have real numbers, which you've been using up until now, plus the imaginary, and together they make a complex system of numbers. And the word imaginary is a little bit of a misnomer because they are just as real as real numbers. So why do we need them? Because equations that have no real solutions usually are going to have solutions that are imaginary. So the imaginary unit, we use the letter I, to represent an imaginary unit, and it's defined as the square root of negative 1 is equal to i. So a pure imaginary number is always going to be written in the form a plus b i, where a is a real number and b i is the imaginary part. Okay, so the big deal is you have to be able to simplify radicals with square roots. You have to be able to simplify radicals with square roots that have negatives underneath them. So remembering that what we can do is remember that we can factor out the negative and then go ahead and use that property for radicals that says whenever you're taking the radical, the square root of a product, it's the square root of each factor multiplied together. So square root of negative 9 Remember, negative 9 is negative 1 times positive 9, which is the same thing as square root of negative 1 times the square root of 9. Definition of i is the square root of negative 1, so that makes an i. Square root of 9 is 3. And then we usually write the real coefficient followed by the imaginary number. Okay, let's look at number 5. So number five, before I go ahead and I do this, I'm going to break down negative 32. Okay, so now I know I'm going to break it up so I have negative one. But the 32 part is 16 times 2, and 16 is a perfect square. So it's times 16 times 2. So we have the square root of negative 1 times 16 times 2. This is a perfect square. What's the square root of negative 1? I. This is a perfect square. What's the square root of 16? 4. This is not a perfect square. It stays under the radical. And now we just have to write it correctly. So we would say 4i radical 2. Um, you might see it written 4 radical 2i, but very rarely. Most people go ahead and always put imaginary numbers before radical signs. Now let's look and see how you're going to be using this when you're solving quadratic equations. So suppose that we have this equation, 
x squared plus 81 equals or e equals 0. So I know that I can use a square root, root method because I have no b term. So I would first separate the square from the constant by subtracting 81 from both sides. And now I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides. And remember, plus or minus. So the square root of x squared is x. And then the square root of negative 81, remember, is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 81. This makes i. This makes 9. So I get plus or minus 9i which tells me that my solutions are 9i and negative 9i. So next we're going to go ahead and talk about completing the square method for solving quadratics. So it's not only for converting quadratic equations into vertex form. So let's go ahead and we're going to look at this equation here. So if I went ahead and I factored the left side, I would get x plus 7 times x plus 7. So what that means is I actually have the same factor twice, which means it is a perfect square. And so whenever I have something that is squared, I can undo the square by using the square root. Remember, since there's a variable under that radical, I have to do plus or minus. So the square root cancels the squaring, which gives me x plus 7 is equal to the positive or negative of the square root of 4, which is 2. So it's very similar to what I did before with factoring, solving by factoring. I'm going to set up two equations. x plus 7 is equal to positive 2. x plus 7 is equal to negative 2. And now I'm going to solve for x. x is negative 5 or x is negative 9 when I subtract 7 from both sides. So I end up with two solutions. And my solutions are negative 9 and negative 5. And this is basically what we're going to be doing with completing the square. Make a perfect square trinomial and use the square root method from there. So a review from some previous work we did when we were converting to quadratics. So remember, what we want to do now is we want to get just the x terms on one side, constant on the other. This time, we don't have to worry about factoring out that leading coefficient. We're just going to go ahead and divide everything by a. And so that means we'll end up with a 1 in front of the x squared, b over a in front of x, and then a c over a. Then we'll go ahead and complete the square by using that same formula we did before cutting the b over 2 in half and square it, and then we'll add that same number to both sides. And remember, since we didn't factor out a, we divided by it, we don't have to worry about that part. We factor it, so we get our perfect square trinomial. Take the square root of both sides, remember we're going to do the positive and negative, and then we simplify. So let's go for it. Okay, so here's number three. So first thing is separate the variable terms from the constant, okay? Make sure that a equals one. If not, I would divide everything by whatever that number is. In this case it is, so I'm ready to go ahead and do my b over two. So I'm gonna just do it off to the side and square that. So that's gonna give me negative nine squared, which is 81. So I'm gonna add 81 on the left and 81 on the right. Now I'm going to simplify the right side, negative 56 plus 81 is 25, and on the left side I'm going to factor it. Remember this should always factor into a perfect square trinomial. It's the square root of the first term, which is x, the square root of the constant, which is 9, and it's the sine of the b term squared. So next I'm ready to go ahead and solve by taking the square root of both sides, remembering plus or minus the constant's square root. That leaves me x minus 9 is equal to positive 5 or negative 5. And then last, set up two equations and solve. x minus 9 is 5. x minus 9 is negative 5. Adding 9 to both sides, we get 14 and 4. 
So my solutions are x equals 4 and 14. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at number 5. Now number 5, conveniently enough, is already separated variable terms from the constant. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide, check my a. Well, right now a is 4, so I'm going to divide every term by 4. And it does give me a fraction over there. So I now I have x squared minus 2x equals negative 3 fourths. So now I'm ready to complete the square. I take the b term, which is negative 2, divide it by 2, and square it, which gives me negative 1 squared, which is positive 1. So now I'm going to take that, I'm going to add it to both sides, plus 1, plus 1. And now I'm going to simplify on the right, factor on the left. So I know that it's going to be a perfect square trinomial. So that gives me x, square root of 1 is 1, and a minus in the middle. Over here, adding fractions, remember you need a common denominator. 1 can be written as 4 fourths. Negative 3 plus 4 is positive 1. Keep the denominator. Next up, square root of both sides. Plus or minus, don't forget. So we have x minus 1 is the square root of 1 fourth. Remember, square root of 1 fourth, it's the square root of 1 over the square root of 4, which is 1 over 2. So we have plus or minus 1 over 2. Now we divide up into two equations. x minus 1 is positive 1 half. x minus 1 is negative 1 half. Adding 1 to both sides. I get 1 and a half, which is 3 over 2. Adding 1 to both sides, I get positive 1 half. So my solutions are 1 half and 3 halves. So the final method that we're going to be looking at for solving quadratics is one called the quadratic formula. So hopefully this is familiar to you already. But remember a couple things about the quadratic formula. One is that you need to have the equation equal to 0. And it, so it must be in standard form. And in standard form, you must be able to say what's A, what's B, what's C. Remember that if a term is missing, so let's say you end up with something like 4x squared plus 8 equals 0, that means the B term is 0. So for any equation that meets the criteria of being quadratic, if we can identify what A is, what B is, and what C is when it's set equal to 0, we can rearrange all of those values into this formula opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. A couple things to remember, you got to follow order of operations, which means you do under the radical first, square, multiply, then subtract, then simplify the square root, do the 2 times a, and then remember this is not saying b is going to be always negative, it's saying it's the opposite of whatever b is. And then you go ahead and simplify further from there. So let's go ahead and use it. So a couple steps, just to remember, again, equation has to be equal to zero. Figure out what your a, b, and c are. Substitute into formula, simplify. Okay, so let's go ahead and do number one. x squared plus 2x minus 63. So it already is in the correct format. So what is my a, what is my b, and what is my c? So do your ABCs. One, two, negative 63. To prevent myself from making mistakes, I go ahead and I do this thing I call the skeleton. I go ahead and I put in all the constants, the squares, the minuses, and the pluses, and then I put parentheses wherever a number is supposed to be. So now I'm going to go ahead and fill those in. So I know it's opposite of b, so I'm going to put in the 2 there, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And now I'm going to go ahead and simplify. So first I'm going to do 2 squared minus 4 times a times c. So I have a negative and I know that I have one negative here. What's a negative times a negative? It's going to be a positive. So I know that 2 squared is 4 and I know that 4 times 63 is 132 and negative times a negative is a positive so it's 4 plus so it's 4 plus 132, which is 
136. So here's what I have. The opposite of 2 is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 136 and 2 times 1 is 2. So remember just rules for radicals because this 2 here can't is not under a square root I can't do 136 divided by 2 I have to first simplify 136. So off to the side I go ahead and I talk about well 136. I know that 136 is even so it's a multiple of 2. That would give me 78. 78 is 39 times 2. 39 is 13 times 3. So what I do see in here is that I have 2 twice as a factor. 2 times 2 is 4, which means this is the square root of 4 times the remaining factor is 39. The square root of 4 times the square root of 39 will give me 2 square root of 39. So when I rewrite this, I'm going to rewrite it in simplified radical form. 2 square root of 39 all divided by 2. One more thing to note when we're doing our last simplification anything that's outside the square root is a coefficient. So if all of our coefficients have a common factor in this case they're all divisible by 2 I can divide everything by 2. If only one of them in the numerator was divisible by 2 I could not do this. So negative 2 divided by 2 makes negative 1. 2 divided by 2 makes a 1, but I don't need to rate it. Over, and then square root of 39. When I cancel out that 2, remember this became a 1, so I don't need that anymore. So what this is saying is that my solutions are negative 1 minus the square root of 39 and negative 1 plus the square root of 39. Okay, we're going to go ahead and we're going to substitute 1 in here. So first thing is check to make sure it's in the correct format. It is because it's equal to 0. So my A is 1, my B is negative 2, and my C is 0. So now I'm ready to go. Okay, so I have X is opposite of B, etc. And then I substitute, I have, now I'm ready to go ahead and do the math. Opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 1 times 2 is 8. Since there was only one negative sign, it's minus 8 all over 2. So now I have 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 4. Well, what does this imply? This implies I'm going to have an imaginary solution. So if I go ahead and I do the square root of negative 4, I've got to remember it's negative 1 times 4, and the square root of negative 1 is i, and the square root of 4 is 2. So that would be plus or minus 2i all over 2, and since everything's divisible by 2, I get 1 plus or minus i. So my solutions are x is 1 minus i and 1 plus i. Thank you.